Welcome to our video on reactions, supplement one. This is from chapter three, section two, and this is a supplement to our fourth video from that section, which was reactions. Suppose that we have a cantilevered beam in the following configuration. We have two vertical supports here, which we would perceive as columns that are supporting a cantilever truss. Each of these bays is 12 feet. When you count them off, there are 10 bays. So the overall length of this structure is 120 feet, um, or the actual cantilevered portion is 8 times 12 feet, or 96 feet. And we have some sort of uniformly distributed roof load over this. And for the moment, to keep our numbers simple, we've made W equal to one kip per foot. So, <clears throat> when we multiply one kip per foot times 120 feet, we have a total of 120 kips, which would be centered over this point. <clears throat> so the first thing we want to do when we solve a problem like this is draw a free body of the object in question. In this case, we're looking at the equilibrium of the truss, and we're trying to understand what these vertical members are doing in terms of uh, keeping the, the truss stable and in place. They are creating reactions of some sort that are occurring at this point and at that point. So we can draw in what those are. So I've basically taken this uniform distributed load W of one kip per foot, multiplied it times 120 feet to get 120 kips, which is centered at the center point of the truss. <coughs> so we have five bays on this side and five bays on that side. And you need to count the bays because the asymmetric nature of the truss can be visually a little deceptive. And sometimes you think you're at the center of something and you're not. So count the bays and make sure it's where it's supposed to be. I've labeled this point A and that point B, and I've put in the reactions from that vertical member and that vertical member, which have been designated at R, as R sub A and R sub B. And I didn't draw them in here, but usually we put a little cross piece there. Uh, forgotten left those out, but we understand in the context of this problem that these are reactions for which we're solving. Now you'll notice I've drawn RA and RB up. That's our standard convention of a positive vertical force. We'll solve for those forces and if we don't get a positive number the mathematics will be telling us that whatever the assumed directions of those arrows was when we drew them um, So, we have only vertical forces, we have no horizontal forces, so there's need, no need to apply the horizontal equation of equilibrium, which is the sum of the px equals zero, to find any horizontal forces. <coughs> At this point, there's also no need to apply the sum of the verticals because we have two unknowns, R, B, <coughs> and R, A, and we'll get one equation with two unknowns which won't allow us to solve for anything directly. So what we want to do is we want to find a moment equation and part of the process here is to use our intelligence to choose a point that will simplify the mathematics. So what we want to do is pick a point um, to take moments about for which one of these two unknown forces has its line of action through that point. So we could pick any point, for example, along the line of action of this force, or any point along the line of action of this force. And for simplicity, we would pick either A or B. We could pick those points up there. Uh, we could pick a point somewhere up here. But the key thing is we want to pick a point where either RA or RB has zero lever arm so that those forces disappear from our equation of equilibrium. So we're going to start by taking moments about point B, which is this point right here. 
sum of the moments about point B is going to equal plus 120 kips. The reason being that this 120 kips is tending to produce a clockwise moment about point B. And the lever arm in this case is 36 feet. Plus RA. So when I look at RA, we see that it's tending to create clockwise moments about the about point B. So it's creating this kind of movement or inclined to create that kind of movement. So we put a plus sign times RA and the lever arm is the perpendicular distance from the line of action of A to point B, which is this distance right here. And that would be 24 feet. And by the way, um, relative to point B, if we wanted the perpendicular distance between the line of action of this force and point B, that perpendicular distance would be measured along here. So I didn't uh, draw the extension line there because I felt like it was clear that the, the, uh, the lever arm in every case is along the horizontal and we've got the measurements of dimensions along the horizontal up here. Um, so when we go through and take this over to the other side of the equation, um, or if we see this as our equation, we take this over to the right hand side, it becomes negative. Um, that leaves us with 120 kips times 36 over 24 with a minus sign in front or a minus 180 kips. Now, what that means is the minus sign says the direction in which that arrow was originally drawn is not correct. So this is a no. And we put this over here, we say RA is equal to minus 180 kips. And it's understood when you see that minus sign that in your mind you should reverse the direction of that arrow. It's not up, it's actually down. Again, I want to emphasize you can go, if you want, if you want that arrow to be in the correct direction, you start the whole process over and you draw that arrow in the correct direction, which would be downward and then you'll get a positive sign here. We don't tend to do that though because we always understand that uh, the mathematics will tell us the answer and the pluses and minuses are really important indicators of directionality and we look at them as an indicator. And in a way it's better to just draw every arrow up um, because that's our positive direction and then we can look at the pluses and minuses and see what's up and what's down. Again though, there's no absolute right way to do this. If you want to, you can draw this arrow downward to start with. Okay, now if we take the sum of the moments about point A, which is right here, again we have clockwise motion tending to be induced by this 120 kip force about point A. So we have plus 120 kips and the lever arm between the line of action of the 120 kip force and point A is 5 times 12 feet, or in other words, 60 feet. And now relative to point A, RB is tending to produce counterclockwise moments. So we put a minus RB and the lever arm between the line of action of RB and point A is this horizontal dimension here which is 2 times 12 feet, or in other words, 24 feet. <coughs> and by equilibrium, the sum of all that has to be equal to zero. We take this term over to the other side, and uh, this equation is not correct, so we're going to have a momentary pause here. So now when we take, uh, in essence, these are of opposite signs, so you can imagine taking that over and it becomes plus and then you flip the equation around so that we have RB times 24 feet is plus 120 kips times 60 feet. And when we go through the mathematics, we get RB is equal to 120 kips times 60 over 24, which is 300 kips. Now, as your check, you should um, 
add all these vertical forces. So if this force, RB, is plus 300 kips and that one is minus 180, we add them together and their net upward force is 120 kips, which just equilibrates that. So the sum of the vertical forces, again, has become our equation that allows us to check our result. That ends our supplemental video to the reactions videos from chapter three, section two.